Good morning and welcome to my craft desk. Today we're making really useful but very pretty pockets for our junk journals and to give you some inspiration I've made quite a few up as usual and here's just a few of the ones that I've made to share with you today. So these are triple pockets so they have three openings and they're made from just one book page. So they're intended for use inside a folded up page in your junk journal. They have collage on the front and each of them has a space on the back for journaling. So each of them has a little journaling spot. On this one I've literally used a glossy book page and kept that and just added a butterfly as a focal design. I've added botanical scraps and little bits of decorative paper on this one and on this one it has more of a vintage design. So each of these is made from just one large book page and I've used glossy book pages today which means I hope they are more accessible and a little bit cheaper. As usual on my channel to make things super easy and you'll also find a copy of these on Pinterest I have process steps to share with you today so feel free to take a screenshot of those and with all of that let's pull up a chair get comfy and make some awesome pockets. So the first thing we need to do to make our little three tier pocket is choose a book page and we want one that's big enough that when we've done all of this folding to create the three pockets so we have a big one here, one there and one at the front here is we want the whole thing to be big enough still to put quite a few things in. So I'm starting with a large page here and it is a glossy book page. I'll show you the book it came from. In fact the set, it's from a Reader's Digest set and I had a whole load of these. So I thought I would just make something up to make good use of them because the paper itself, let's tear that out, is quite thick. So it's actually beautiful paper but not always as easy to use these pages in our projects if they're glossy but I personally find them easier to get hold of. So we want to do step one, find a large book page and create the basic folds and begin by creating a one centimetre flap down one of the sides and I may as well do it round or down the side that's got the ratty tatty edge. Now I'm, I'm human and I've moved one of the points a bit lower. I'll explain that little adjustment to the process steps in a minute. I'll make a change to the version that I put on Pinterest. So I do put these on a Pinterest board. So if you want to find these more easily and not within the video, this video, if you, if you don't want to take a screenshot, you will be able to find them on Pinterest. So we've got a book page. This particular book page is 23 centimetres by ooh, nearly 29, so it is a big one. And I'm going to begin by adding that flap down the long side. So, about one centimetres, doesn't need to be absolutely spot on, but ideally make it a centimetre all the way along. So don't have it coming off at an angle, try to be as even as possible all the way. And this is going to give us one of our flaps that we use on the various pockets. So we've got our flap. I'm going to fold this over. So just to that new edge that we've created. Let's get these out of the way. Being as neat as possible again. Put my folder. And then I'm going to fold this up but not as far as the top. So we'll go to about there. I go to about an inch or so, maybe a bit more lower down from the top. Let's just give you a measurement. So that's about nearly an inch and a half, inch and a quarter. So I've just folded it up to give myself a bit of space here. And in fact, I'll give that a good squidge down too. And I'm going to open it up and just round the corners at this stage with my corner rounder. So one, two, three, four. 
as we collage this, I'll go back round with my corner rounder and tidy up again, but I quite like to get the basics in place. So we have done adding the flap and we've rounded the corners, we've folded it in half. We've also done folding up to create the middle pocket, which will be on this lower piece here. And now need to do this step, which is making a tear or cut on a lower fold by that. Let me just show you. So as I open it up, I can see a crease just here. So a vertical crease and you can cut this, but I find it just as easy quite carefully to tear it. Let's hope she gets it right. So I'm just going to tear up as far as that horizontal fold that we'd created. Fold it back in place and we have the basics of one pocket. I'm going to create another pocket down here that comes a bit lower than this middle one. So I'll take this bottom piece here and I'll just fold that up, but not as far as our middle pocket. So we've got this stepped situation and press that down. So we've now got a pocket made at the top, albeit we'll obviously need to glue some of this down. We've got a middle pocket or an opening and a space at the front. Just need to do a little bit of snipping with our scissors. So we'll open it up like this. The two horizontal creases have created a bit of a rectangle on the right hand side here. And I'm going to do a bit of snipping and just allow that to be glued down. So it's a bit of pie either side of those horizontal creases mean that we have, let's just put that off, a little flap here and all I'm going to do is take some Prit, not some wet glue. I'm just going to glue that down. It's excess surplus to requirements but I'd rather glue it down than cut it off. So we've already done quite a few of our steps. We've zoomed through to step five, which was cutting those triangles out, and gluing the flap down. I'm now going to bolster the middle pocket, and this is the different bit. This is what, what allows us to add more to this middle pocket. Previously, in my previous version, I had used glue to glue down the two sides here, and it really reduces what you can put in, but it also makes it much more lightly to detach itself because you've got much more stress on here. So what I'm going to do is add a couple of flaps. So we need nothing more than a little bit of paper. This is scrap paper from my scrap paper box. And I'm going to add a flap to either side of the back of the middle pocket. So I obviously don't want it to be longer than the pocket itself. And I don't want it to be visible either. So I'm going to make this flap be just a little bit short of the height of this middle pocket. I need two of these. So I'll take a little rectangle of paper, and it is just paper, and fold that in half. And I'll do the same again with this one. So just measure by eye about a centimetre less than the height of that pocket. And the reason I do that is having rounded the corners, if you had this flap being longer, you would start to see it. And I just don't like that. So tear that one down, make another flap. And all I'm going to do is add, add these as little hinges on the back of this middle pocket. So I'll add a bit of glue and I find this really does help with making it robust. What I will do, let's get those flaps out of the way so you can see a bit better. I'm going to get this very flush against the edge of the pocket, which will help with it opening very neatly. Move it 
down a tiny bit. My other one. A bit of glue and sit that on the other side over here. On the original design when I made these, I really enjoyed making them, but it just annoyed me a little bit the way the middle pocket was working. It was just constrained. So I thought this would be a bit of an improvement. There we go. And we have done, let's take a check. Step six, bolstering the middle pocket, adding two side flaps. Now I haven't put glue on the back. I haven't attached it yet, but you can see what it's going to do. And this one's going to come up there. What we need to do is have some fun with collage. So I'm just going to grab some papers and talk you through how we do that. What I like to do when I collage these is maybe use neutrals on the top and the middle pocket here and really go for a strong focal point on this lower pocket, on the third pocket at the bottom. So you can see I've used some gorgeous papers. So it's a chance to use any of those focal points you've got, any of those gorgeous pages, maybe images from books. But you can also make a play of the colours that are in the glossy paper and just enhance that, which is what I did here. I've got Shakespearean script, so Shakespearean phrases up here and just plain paper. So I haven't gone overboard on this one. Here I've got, this is Victoria Designs gorgeous uh, botanicals and some labels. I've got some music paper. I've added some faux stitching. On this one, I've got more botanicals, labels behind. Again, lots of space each time for journaling because these are meant to have a journaling spot on the back, which is why you just slot them into a page in a junk journal. Here I've got some, these are the new papers from Tracy Fox, her new compendium set. Again, I've gone for simple book pages in the first two layers and then allowing this lower piece to really shout and be the focal point and space to journal again. So I thought we'd do something just a little bit like that, but absolutely do whatever works for you. Shall we start with should we start with a, oh, we've got a German dictionary here. I thought I'd picked up my Shakespearean book, but we'll go with the flow. I'm going to start with the front of the top pocket. We'll just get some paper on there. Now I'm going to be frugal and I'm not going to collage all of the interior of the pocket because I won't see it. So I don't need to. I'm just going to be, in fact, I'm going to swap glues and for speed, I'm going to use my more loose glue, my more liquid glue. And we'll just get a little bit on there. So I'm going to obviously ruin my rounded corners, but I'll go in and top them up. And I'll just take a bit of paper up there and add that. Trying to be as neat as possible at the top so I don't get too much of a gap. And I look where the edge of my words are so that I'm not going to cut them off when I trim around this. Or indeed, when I fold that back, which I can do because I'm going to collage on the back and I'll go over that. If I want to do the same on this side, I can just open it up, get some glue on here fold that in. So the benefit of not having sealed this up yet is that you can be a bit smarter with how you glue down your collage papers and all of the, I think the extra strength that comes from not cutting sides off your papers but gluing them down like that I think is just, it all helps the pocket be a bit more robust at the end. That will just show at the top and I'll carry on and do something on the front of this pocket as well, but I think I'll go for some contrast. I've got a more yellowing book here. Let's have a little bit of that. And again, you might go in and add some labels. I've got some really narrow washi tape on this one, book pages, but I'll just get the basics down. So again, let's be frugal and just tear off enough so that we think the whole thing is collaged, you see. I don't need to collage all the way down here. So 
So I'll get some yellowing book page on there, on the front, like that. And I'm just looking to make sure I protect all of the letters. I don't want to cut through them. And I can also just fold those in as well. So I'll just take my print to that one, glue that in. And I'll do the same on this side. But I need to be careful that none of that will be visible. So I think what I will do is go back in straight away, just trim those off. So I just do keep repeating my corner rounding, I know. There we go. And I think also to help them not be visible, I'll cut a bit of that off. Don't need to see that. That's better. Happy now. So I've got the bare bones of some book pages on the front here. What I can do with those two now, so with the back and the middle pockets, I can glue down as I go. So I'm just going to glue down what I've done. So back pocket can be glued down and that means I can run some glue up this flap that we made to begin with. So we'll glue up there and fold over. And then I'm going to put some glue on the back of the extra flaps that we added. It does get easier, doesn't it? When you've done one of these, you'll realise how simple it is. It's probably good for mass making to fold that up. I will come back in a minute and add some extra labels, but let's do the basics to begin with. So we've done the back and the middle pocket. We can now collage the front pocket and then we're going to move to the entire back. So front of the lower pocket. And for this, I've had a lot of fun with my images. And I thought I would share a couple that I've got my hands on. I don't make digitals myself, but when I find some really pretty ones, I do like to share them. So this is a fantastic page from a new set from Victoria Designs. And I really like them because when I print them, they come out about the right size as a focal point. And you've got these really pretty, these are teals in these ferns. I've got butterflies and I've got gorgeous old botanicals. I just thought they were really pretty. I used one on the front of this and I splatted it with gold. And have I used another one? I think I did. I used the butterfly one and I've added a little bit of lace here. I've got an insect image from Artie Mays and some more of that compendium paper from Tracy. But literally anything you have. I've got old maps behind, really scraggly scraps. This is old copy paper and some little bits and bobs on the back. So that is a page I thought it was worth sharing. In fact, this is also another one from Victoria Designs. And then I wanted to just share a couple of Tracy's pages. Let me see if I can find the ones that I thought would really work well. Uh, this one. So this again, ooh, right way up. This again is a collection of little rectangles and the sizes are brilliant for pockets. And we've got these gorgeous greens in check. I've got vintage black and some script. I've got a little bit of tartan down here, some bold font, a circle, an old ticket, and a little bit of a flowery element down here and here. So I thought these were also great and I've been using these on the front. So I'd use the London Bridge uh, focal point on one of my pockets, even the journal pages themselves are particularly beautiful for some of the collage. So rather than being greedy and keep them to myself, I just thought I would share some of those ideas with you. So let's go back to making a mess here. Let's go back to finding my pocket and covering the front. So I've also been a bit more organised and I've got some little images. We could choose one. I do like the bird. I might, I might do the bird. 
um, I've got some black and whites, they might work too. Absolutely stunning some of these. What should we have? Should we have a should we have a squirrel? Should we have the bird? Oh no, let's have let's have this one. I just love the colours on this one. It's going to be too big, but that's fine. I am going to fold it over at the back. Take off the excess. I like this one because it's got yellow on it and it just feels a bit spring-like. So I'm going to get this on here and then I'll cover up a bit more of the gloss, the glossy page, with some labels and other scraps. And I'm going to use my liquid glue and work quickly. That can go on there, on the front. And I'm going to do something about this down here. Let me have a look in my little tub of strips. One of my little resources, tub of strips, try and keep things because they can prove very useful. What else have we got? Oh, a bit of book page. A bit of book page and that is Shakespeare. I think I'll get that on, but I like the taggly edge. I can go there. I'm going to have all of that. I'm going to have that. I'm going to have that front. But I don't want the straight line. That's good. Let's get that on. The fun bit is the collage, I think, but it doesn't take long to create the structure of the pocket. Let's see if I can find something as well in my label. Label tub. working really quickly here. Just filling in the blanks basically. You can go on there. And I need a bit more emphasis down here. I think I'll take a bit of washi, halve it and add some of that. This has got a bit of blue in the square so it goes with the blue on here. I can put a little bit of label on top of that. So I've got the washi sticking out. There we go. So nothing too clever. And while I can, round those off again. Looking good. And I know that that's too long but what I'll do is turn it over, fold that back and then I'm going to put paper on the back here that is of a kind that allows us to journal on it. So let's just see what we can do. I'm rather spoilt at the moment with some of these Victoria design papers. I don't want all of that, but let's see. I really like that. I really like that. So I've got space to journal, so I'll get some of that on there. Just covering in the back, basically, with whatever you feel like. Up to the top again. There we go. And I'm going to bring something down here. Let me find my big tub. Big tub of scrumptiousness. Probably want a couple of papers from in here. I'll just pull a few out see what we've got. That can go in there. Brown paper works for so many situations. I can't get enough of it. I have splattered this one with gold acrylic paint. It just takes the, the flat edge off it. It's just not quite so dull as something interesting. And I don't mind that I've even got a bit of pocket sticking out. So just something like that. I will I'll work quickly. You can go back and add more. Stick that on. There we go. And it just needs a few more elements to make it interesting. What shall we add? I think I'll glue down the bottom of this that we folded over. And we'll add some magic from my super luxurious washi tape. 
which I'm going to tear down the middle and use that to stop this edge looking so straight and the tones, the greens work really, really well. Yes, can't beat a few letters. We'll add that down there. I would normally take a little bit longer, but in the interest of speed, so we have a finished item. That could go there, and I need just a little bit. Let's get some script on. Let's tear that off. Break that up and just help the top to feel a little bit joined up by having the same on as we had down there. Tied it up. And what we've done is we've basically collaged the fronts and the back, Mr. Corner. I will quickly go around with a pen and add some faux stitching. And then I think we can just glue the final bit together. So I've added a little bit of faux stitching and a few extra little labels and washi tape. All I need to do now is add glue to the front pocket to finish that off and bring it all together. So I run my glue down the flap that we created when we added that first one centimetre fold and press that down. And if you've enjoyed making these triple pockets, then check out my video where I make these porthole pockets. They're unbelievably easy, you can have lots of fun with collage, and they look fantastic in your junk journal. I hope to see you soon.